It is my privilege to welcome Scott Reckler, who has had an exceptional career in real estate and has made a significant impact here on Long Island and in the New York metropolitan region. Scott Reckler, Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of RxR Realty LLC, is a developer and a visionary who has created extensive economic opportunity for our region. He is also a philanthropist who understands the importance of public service and giving back to the communities in which he does business. Mr. Reckler has been a dedicated and generous friend to Hofstra University. For nearly a decade, he has funded scholarships that have allowed Hofstra students to participate in seminars at the Washington Center where they spend two weeks in the nation's capital examining politics, policy, and media coverage. Mr. Reckler co-chairs the annual Suburban Diversity Dinner presented by the National Center for Suburban Studies at Hofstra University. He serves on the board of advisors of the university's Wilbur F. Breslin Center for Real Estate Studies. And in 2008, he was the honoree of the 12th annual Hofstra Gala, which raises funds for scholarships. In his position at the helm of RxR, he has led the company to become one of the largest owners, managers, and developers in the New York City and surrounding region, managing and developing both commercial and residential properties. Mr. Reckler uses his influence, experience, and business acumen to serve the public good. Recently appointed to the board of the MTA, he is a former vice chairperson of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. He also serves as chairman of the Regional Plan Association, an influential transit advocacy group, and on the boards of many cultural and philanthropic institutions, such as the Feinstein Center for Medical Research, the Tribeca Film Institute, the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, the Long Island Children's Museum, and the Perelman Center for Performing Arts at the World Trade Center, among others. Scott Reckler has demonstrated a fervent commitment to civic responsibility. For example, just down the road from Hofstra on Hempstead Turnpike is his iconic building, RxR Plaza. If you visit there during the holiday season, you will see the RX Plaza Christmas tree and ice skating rink, which are symbols of the holidays here on Long Island for all to enjoy. I now ask our candidate for an honorary degree, Scott Reckler, to step forward along with President Rabinowitz and Provost Simmons to confer the degree. Mr. President, be me. Scott Reckler's leadership has quite literally helped shape our local landscape. For his distinguished career in real estate as a real estate developer, the impact his work has had on our region, his philanthropy, and his generosity to Hofstra University and its students, it is my honor to present him as a candidate for the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. The university awards the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, to honor exceptional individual for their outstanding career achievements. And Scott, you are an exceptional human being. So for your business acumen, your professional leadership, and your public service, and for your philosophy, and I just, uh, phil philanthrop, phil philanthrop, philanthropy, okay. Philanthropy. I'm not even a doctor yet. I, I mean, know. of all people who should know the word for fundraising. <laughs> but it's because my mind was getting ahead of me because I learned something at dinner tonight. Having, we had a dinner with Scott. And he, he's a very humble guy. He does not, modest, he does not want to bring attention to himself. But he did something this week which was incredible, which is that his companies gave $10 million to 5,000 impoverished residents of the metro area who had humongous burdening past due medical bills and he paid off $10 million of those bills.
Now you know why I got tongue-tied. I am pleased to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. She's going to hope. Thank you, Don, for that uh, great introduction. Uh, I heard a lot of moans when, one, when he mentioned that I was on the board of the MTA. I apologize if any trains are delayed. But, uh, and Provost Simmons, thank you for uh, this, this the great degree. And, and President Rabinowitz, thank you uh, for your, your kind introduction and your friendship uh, that we've had for so many years. Um, and also thank you for your leadership and Hofstra's leadership. Uh, not just here on campus, but really being a leader and making our community uh, a better place all along. And it's been uh, more and more you and the university are uh, making a meaningful difference uh, in the quality of lives of, of all of us. And, and most importantly, congratulations to the Hofstra graduating class of 2018. Awesome. You know, some of you may have achieved this in four years, or maybe it took you longer, but you didn't stop, you didn't quit, and here you are today because of it. What a terrific testament this is to your intellect and your creativity, and especially your tenacity. When I look to hire someone at my company, I always put a premium on a candidate CQ and PQ, their creative and passion quotients over their IQ. And the fact that you are graduating from this esteemed institution means that you have them all. So kudos to all of you for this tremendous achievement. I'm not a graduate of Hofstra, but my company headquarters, as just noted, is just down the block. And I've engaged with the university for years as a neighbor, supporter, and collaborator. So I'm incredibly humbled to receive this honorary degree and have the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I know that prior recipients of this honor have included everyone from human rights hero Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, entertainment icons like Long Island's own Billy Joel. These are people whose acts are impossible to follow. So forgive me for feeling a little nervous about that. But it's not just because I'm hearing the footsteps of those bold faces, not to mention three presidents and an astronaut. No, tonight I'm feeling a bit nervous because I'm literally one of the last speakers between you and the next phase of your lives. As, as I was writing these remarks, I couldn't help but reflect on my own graduation from Clark University nearly 30 years ago. In my last semester of college, I was absolutely positive that I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to be a lawyer. I was also going to marry the woman that I had been dating since high school. I had everything figured out. My mom was thrilled when I was accepted to law school. She proudly wrote me a $200 check to reserve my spot in the class. Then, as graduation day approached, I realized I didn't want to be a lawyer. I also realized that I was actually in love with one of my best friends from college, not the girl that I had been dating for the last six years. It gets bad. You can imagine the look on my mom's face when I gave her back that $200 check. And I did it at our graduation dinner, no less. Not one of my finest moments, and I apologize to all moms here today. Or imagine the look on my friend's face, Debbie, when I told her that I was really in love with her. Without a doubt, that was one of my finest moments. Debbie and I have now been married over 26 years. Thank you. We have three beautiful children, and she remains my best friend to this day. And I love you, Debbie, over there. As for turning away from a career in law, I decided to try my hand in my family's real estate business, which worked out pretty well. And mom, I hope you've finally forgiven me. I love you too. So as you all sit here this evening, while you might believe you know what your future holds, I assure you that the only certainty is uncertainty. Life's journey is inevitably a long 
winding, and unpredictable path. So avoid becoming a prisoner of the past, but instead see yourself as a pioneer of the future. And as the circumstances around you inevitably change, see it not as an obstacle, but as an opportunity. And always, always keep moving forward. Make it a point to regularly check the pulse of the current state of play, or as I like to say, regularly recalibrate reality. This ability to adapt is in many ways embedded in all of our DNA. It merely needs to be uncovered. After all, once upon a time, my grandfather had a modest business manufacturing lightweight aluminum art easels. Yes, you heard me right, aluminum art easels. There is an oft-told family story of when my grandparents uh, trekked to Brighton Beach for the day. We actually have film footage of this monumental moment when my grandfather was schlepping two heavy wooden beach chairs through the sand when my grandmother screamed, schmuck, why are you making them aluminum beach chairs, aluminum art easels, when you should be making aluminum beach chairs? My grandmother and grandfather realized it was time to recalibrate reality. Shortly afterwards, he filed a patent and a lucrative and life-changing business was born. So to me, regularly recalibrating reality means recognizing change and having the conviction to change your own approach. It means accepting that what worked yesterday may not work today. And it means accepting that what works today may not work tomorrow. So as you go forward, I encourage you to be bold enough and fearless enough to write your own 21st century playbook. If your bosses or peers don't respect that, then you're working at a company where you aren't likely to have a job much longer because the business isn't likely to be around much longer. Now, if you indulge me for a bit, I want to leave you with a few other lessons that I've learned since my graduation 30 years ago. One of these lessons is to always stay humble and stay hungry. When you're on top, stay hum humble. When times are tough, stay hungry and fight your way back to the top. We have a saying at RxR. It is, success isn't owned, it's leased, and rent is due every day. Or as my father-in-law likes to tell me, some days you're the top dog, and some days you're the fire hydrant. <laughs> In other words, never become complacent or take your success for granted. For today's global 21st century economy, this is a lesson that rings truer than ever. The rate of change is unlike anything you or I or anyone has ever experienced. Think about it. 10 years ago, no one would have believed the world's largest taxi company wouldn't own a car. The world's largest hotel chain wouldn't own a hotel. And the world's largest retailer would barely own a single physical store. You know them as Uber, Airbnb, and Amazon. In the blink of an eye, one success or failure can change in an instant. So yes, today you're a college graduate, and the last thing you want to think about is studying. But if you're going to stay ahead in this fast-moving world, you, have, you can never stop being a student. If you want to live a rich, meaningful life, homework and tests are just a way of life. My final RxRism for the evening, and the one that drives all others, is this. Doing good and doing well means doing better. And I believe it's never been more important to see doing good as inseparable from doing well. We all have a responsibility to be stewards for the long-term vitality of our community. That means more than just giving money to a worthwhile cause, but actually giving yourselves your time and your passion. Charity should be a habit of, a, a habit of a lifetime, and should also, so should public service. You just can't wait for others to lead. Each and every one of us have a responsibility to do our part to, to make the world a better place. It's incumbent upon all of us, particularly in those in the public eye, to fill the void of leadership and speak out on social and even political issues, particularly today. Issues like diversity, immigration, gun safety, and voting rights, issues that business leaders have typically shied away from. 
we especially cannot remain silent when it comes to bigotry of any kind. Our strength is in our diversity, and it's what makes America truly great. We should celebrate this diversity as if our social and economic lives depend on it, because they do. The world is changing like never before, and in today's technologically advanced economy, standing still is really like moving backwards. So I know there's a tremendous amount of anxiety about the future with advances in automation, artificial intelligence, and robotics, but I truly believe that we will all be better off in the long run. However, there will be plenty of disruption along the way and plenty of displacement and despair. We're already seeing that play out today. Inequality is as wide as it's been in 100 years. Wages are stagnating, while the cost of living from housing to health care has done nothing but rise. Suicide rates, drug overdoses, and hate crimes are climbing, and life expectancy is declining. We become numb to the notion that someone can walk into a school and murder our children before our very eyes, and we're doing nothing about it. And it seems that not just our leaders, but ordinary Americans can't seem to talk to each other in a civil, constructive way, much less come up with a solution to our nation's ills. So with apologies to Charles Dickens, I guess you can say this is the best of times and the worst of times, an era of great hope and an era of despair. But let me tell you why I have great hope. Even as technology has established insecurity and impermanence as a fact of life, there has never been a time when young people had so much potential to change the world. Technology has empowered the individual to take any dream and turn it into a reality. From climate change to fighting against the plague of gun violence, it's your generation that is leading the way. There is a graduate here tonight, maybe it's one of you, hopefully it's all of you, who will help change the world to make it better. Every single one of you has the power to do just that. But in the words of a great American hero, the one and only Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And as the late Justice Louis Brandeis once wrote, the most important political office is of that of private citizen. We all have a responsibility to be engaged and to actively participate in making our communities better places for everyone. And that is how we can solve our nation's challenges. There are no shortcuts. There are no magical apps. There is no single individual. It's all of us working together as a community that will make the world a better place. I'd like to leave you with one final story. In 1888, way before you got your news online or through your iPhone, an industrialist was sitting having breakfast and he opened the newspaper and saw his own obituary. He was stunned, not only because he wasn't dead, uh, but because of what it said. He was described as the dynamite king, the wealthy inventor of the world's most powerful explosives. In that moment, he made a decision. He did not want to be known for the destruction left from his own invention. So he decided to use his wealth to set up a prestigious prize that to this day recognizes the world's best efforts in literature, science, economics, poetry, and peace. The Nobel Prize. Alfred Nobel chose to be remembered not for his invention of destruction, but for his recognition of life's greatest inspirations. Please. Don't wait to see your own obituary before thinking about what you want your legacy to be. Regardless of what you do with this great Hofstra diploma, choose how you want to be remembered and live your life accordingly. Live your life for your legacy. Once again, congratulations to all the graduates, to their families, and thank you, Hofstra University, for having me here tonight and bestowing this degree on me. Thank you.